Welcome to today's uh, webinar. Um, we will start in just a couple of uh, minutes. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to today's uh, webinar. Uh, thank you for uh, you know taking the time and it's it's I'm sure a, a busy day for for you. Sorry for uh, having to change uh, the webinar uh, link invitation. We had a last minute uh, issue, but we see many many people attending. So today's session is intermedia secreting adds new security features to protect against cyber threats. My name is Carles Carré. I'm the head of uh, product marketing for Intermedia Security Sync. Together with Bojan Dusevic, vice president of product management, we'll be walking through the content of this session. Just a few housekeeping items. This is a live webinar. It will be uh, recorded and the recording and the presentation will be available in the partner portal probably in uh, 24 hours. We like your uh, questions and, and feedback so please use the box uh, it's located at the top of the screen and please share your uh, comments and, and your uh, questions. So let's get started. So in today's webinar, we'll be discussing uh, how small businesses are lagging behind when it comes to protecting against cyber threats. We will also cover uh, the new and very exciting security and data protection uh, features that we have been adding to Security Sync. Uh, my colleague uh, Boyan will, will share the details of the uh, roadmap Security Sync uh, roadmap, and we will also introduce uh, the new file streaming desktop application. And as you will see, we have a program to get your uh, feedback and ideas, suggestions. So we will cover that. And last but not least, we have a very exciting promotion. We will cover that at the end of the webinar, together with a collection of marketing assets to help you sell more and increase your uh, margins. So now I'll pass over uh, Boyan and he will uh, cover uh, you know, the latest from the market uh, and these new capabilities from Security Sync. Boyan. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, quick mic check. Can you just confirm that I'm coming through okay? Yep, all good. Fantastic. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am excited uh, to talk to you all about Secure Sync. We've been uh, hard at work uh, behind the scenes, uh, working on 
uh, improving the product uh, dramatically, and especially in one area, uh, which is security. Thus, the, the topic of our webinar. So over the next uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I'll, I'll be walking you through uh, areas that we've made investment in, and uh, particularly why, uh, and then how you can use uh, these enhancements um, uh, as, as value uh, to, to sell secure SIG into your customer's environment. Uh, before we go there, though, I would like to just sort of level set on um, on some of the trends that, that we're seeing and you're likely seeing them as well. Uh, and as you might imagine, they all revolve around security. So specifically, uh, cyber attacks, right? We, we find that um, SMBs are most gullible, if you will, when it comes to when it comes to cyber attacks, and we feel like uh, it, our partnership with you were uniquely positioned to deliver what would be enterprise grade, enterprise cost security features to um, to an SMB at the SMB dollar, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's just quickly kind of digest the stats that we have in front of you. 65% of SMBs uh, admit that they have been a victim of a cyber attack. Uh, so those numbers are, are staggering. Uh, th there used to be um, an assumption that uh, these sophisticated cyber attackers would only focus on large organizations that could afford to, you know, to pay exorbitant amount of money in, in those um, um, in those fines that they're looking to, to sort of re recoup. But um, uh, their targets are actually just the opposite. They're SMBs because they usually consist of the let's call them less security aware end users more likely to uh, bite on um, a phishing email uh, or a phishing attack of any sort. Uh, so it turns out that the area that we're collectively servicing is most susceptible to various forms of cyber attacks. 40% uh, of small business employees have access to too much company data and 12% of them have access to all company data. So you couple that with the, the risk factor, right, of, of a cyber attack, uh, you start to understand how um, detrimental to business uh, uh, one wrong click could be, right, by by an end user that just, just got fooled by a very carefully uh, crafted email that leads them to, you know, download a, a ransomware strain that encrypts all the files in their machine and ultimately potentially could put a business um, uh, out of business, uh, if that if that makes sense. No pun intended. Uh, so, with, with that said, um, it, it's critical for small businesses to adopt strategies for uh, fighting cyber threats. So, there's a concept of sort of uh, front end protection. Uh, as we all know, that's not foolproof. Uh, so, we'll talk to you about some investments we've made um, around uh, antivirus, anti malware. Uh, and that's effective to a certain degree, uh, and that needs to be coupled with backup and, uh, and other tools to allow you to re remediate from, from various types of uh, cyber attacks. Uh, but SMBs need to be equipped with these tools, otherwise they, they risk, uh, as you'll see in this slide, going out of business within six months due to the costs. Um, we don't have it here, but we, we did a ransomware study uh, a couple years ago, and uh, we found, found some other interesting uh, stats I want to share. Uh, one was that uh, it wasn't just uh, the money that they had to pay attackers that was, uh, you know, a huge sort of strain on the business. It was the days of downtime. So what usually happens when you uh, get a ransomware attack, right, is all of your files are scrambled. And uh, if you if you have backup and if it's granular enough, uh, with most tools, it still takes days, right, to recover what could be potentially terabytes of data. Those are the days that the business isn't selling and supporting their customers, and that ultimately affects their uh, their bottom line, right? Uh, and so this is why smaller businesses, right, are more susceptible to to go, going out of business when when that happens. Uh, so we've been sort of following these trends, and uh, our, our vision has been to to make SecureSync uh, a platform that would give our partners, and, and most importantly, their end customers, peace of mind. Uh, it's a safe home for their files with some built-in controls, right, that will allow them to uh, fight off the initial attack. And we all know that's not always possible, given how sophisticated the attackers are, but you need to have some kind of perimeter defense, right? Uh, and then uh, have tools, built-in tools that allow uh, a partner to remediate. Uh, because the again the flip side is on this slide right it's customers going out of business uh, partners spending hours 
uh, doing busy work, right? Manually restoring files, usually hours that you can't even bill for. So uh, this has been our story for, for some time now, and um, uh, we've just kind of been taking it further and further, adding more value to the platform, um, hoping that that gives you um, more ammunition, right, to sell it over some of the alternative solutions and, and, and gives you more tools to, uh, to manage these various uh, security incidents that can happen to, um, uh, to a small business. So um, we've effectively sort of gone away from just positioning SecureSync as a file sharing product. Um, it still does that and does it very well for those of you that uh, have successfully uh, resold it. So it, it offers secure file sharing and co-editing and mobile access and kind of all that fun stuff that defined this category for many years. Uh, but we have, uh, as many of you know, kind of taken a bit of a pivot and, and decided to say, look, it's not just about file sharing. It's about the file management platform. Um, I don't need to just share files, right? I need to back them up and protect them and be able to remediate from all types of data loss, including ransomware, right? And um, and then I need to be able to ensure that this data is secure. I need to ensure that it's private um, and that only appropriate people have access to it. Um, admins slash partners need to be able to control these things and have different settings for different accounts. Uh, and guess what? You know, what if I could scan every file for uh, for some of these viruses, known viruses, right, and, and just prevent the attack in the first place? So we don't even have to use some of the remediation tools built into the product. So this is kind of where we have arrived um, with with some of the investments uh, made this year. So I, what I'd like to do is um, kind of walk you through that, show you what we've accomplished this year, and share our, our plans um, uh, into next year. Uh, and as Carlos mentioned, Take a minute to talk about our, our streaming app, which is uh, which is an app that we're particularly excited about, and it's currently in a partner partner only data. So I'll, I'll start with um, uh, this umbrella of data security and protection. Uh, uh, th there's been a number of things that uh, we have already launched, and then there are there are a few things that are coming up that are right around the corner, and I want to highlight all of them. Uh, so Bitdefender uh, anti malware. Uh, this is uh, I guess the name implies, right? Uh, this is a unique integration that we have done uh, with a leading uh, vendor in endpoint security. So I think most of you have heard of Bitdefender. They, you know, they rank first, second, or third, depending on uh, which 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 uh, rating list you look at. But they're a well-known security vendor, and uh, we have um, we have decided to offer this service for free to all SecureSync customers. SecureSync slash ShareSync. Uh, so if you haven't taken advantage of this. Today, uh, we, you know, we strongly encourage you to to do it for all of your existing customers and to truly sell the value of this service because it's it's not found with you know any of the alternative solutions, uh, at least not not the premium offer that we're we're including here for free, uh, and we're doing it because again our our focus has always been on uh, on helping the SMB uh, kind of successfully traverse the technology landscape and and helping our partners kind of manage that as well. Uh, so as you may have imagined, it will automatically scan all the files stored in SecureSync, all the files that you the users will add over time and edit and so forth. And when it detects uh, any type of malware, including including ransomware strains that Bitdefender is aware of, uh, it'll do the good work of quarantining that file and eliminating the uh, you know all the all the bad stuff that happens <laughs> after you after you open or or contract a, a ransomware attack. Uh, so just want to lead everybody to to where they can enable this. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this. Uh, just remember that it's under policy, security policy. You can go into every single sub account, and uh, again, it's it's free, uh, and it'll just uh, help you have that uh, peace of mind, if you will, that uh, it's being scanned by top of the grade, right, best in class uh, antivirus, anti malware tool. Um, I think I talked about this. Just wanted to sort of help to help you visualize if, from an end user perspective. If a file is detected as uh, a virus or identified as such, we would basically quarantine it. And there's a little sort of filter in the web app that contains all the quarantine files. Uh, and an admin um, can can go in there and effectively remove that file altogether. Um, obviously, as all antivirus tools, in the odd case that there's it's a false positive, you can mark a file as okay. And bring it back into the, the user's file space. And then we have a bunch of 
reporting that uh, that happens uh, on a daily um, and, and a monthly basis where we alert the admin if uh, something's happened, or better yet, um, we tell them that nothing's happened and there are no no viruses uh, on the platform. Uh, just to be clear, this requires no installation on the endpoint on a mobile device. I mean, this is this is this does the work on the back end in our cloud. So where all the files are initially stored, this is where the scanning happens. So it's really easy. I mean, the the, the extent of the work that you need to do is uh, taking this checkbox and letting us start to scan and then continuously uh, protect uh, end customers' files. So that's that's a biggie from our perspective because it's really unique and it adds tremendous value. And we're, we're basically absorbing that cost on behalf of uh, you and the customer and hopefully gives you, um, uh, you know, more things to talk about in your toolkit around the, the security story that, that is provided within the product and how it sort of uh, um, compares to their alternatives. Um, so it looks like these screenshots didn't come out great, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So um, historically, right, we've had a really good story around ransomware re remediation. Uh, many of you have already used this, this option on the right called rollback. Uh, we've had it in the product for a while, and um, um, we've basically just made it um, quicker, faster, more more scalable. But the the general uh, capability had not changed because what well, we felt like it was pretty good to begin with, right? It, it kind of allows you to roll back to a previous date and time in the case of ransomware or accidental folder moves or you know file corruption, anything bad that happens, you can just you know poop go back to a previous point in time and everything is, is in exact pristine state as it was, you know, let's say yesterday at, at 1 p.m. Um, on the left is the new feature that, um, that that we've added recently, which is a variant of this. It's basically uh, ability to restore uh, deleted content only. So we found that in a lot of the data loss scenarios, uh, it was one user that accidentally blew away a folder tree um, or sometimes intentionally and we needed to recover it and this was a simple way of doing it. So there's a quote unquote an untrash option right now for every folder um, in the file space and this is accessible to you as the admin and you can basically in one click, right, re recover everything that's been deleted um, uh, for the purpose of getting everybody back to work quicker, right? Uh, with all the files that they need to to do their job really well, so um, significant update there because I think this was uh, uh, a significant um, uh, cause for support cases. So we're doing a lot of these manually for our partners, and now it's all available directly uh, within the product. Uh, so uh, related to ransomware and and data loss prevention, right, in in, in a big way. Uh, so moving forward, uh, we, we launched this a while ago, earlier this year. Um, we took some time to unify 2FA um, across all of our products. You'll, you'll, you'll see us talking about Unite, which is our other kind of flagship solution, and SecureSync is very integrated in, into that solution. So we, we built a unified authentication uh, platform and then, and then put 2FA on top of that. So... Um, if you want that added layer of security, uh, you're able to do that now through the control panel. You can enable 2FA for end users, and uh, it'll enforce two-factor authentication across Unite and uh, and SecureSync apps, or or Elevate and ShareSync uh, if you're if you're selling under the private label reseller model. So this one I'm particularly excited about. So this is a feature that isn't launched yet, but we are putting the finishing touches on it. And we feel like it really rounds out um, the security story that we've been preaching and gives you, uh, our partners, uh, another another tool to ensure, uh, to reduce risk, right, and to have that peace of mind within within a customer environment. Um, in essence, what it is, is uh, a set of device controls for an admin that stipulate, right, how many um, desktop um, or mobile devices, each user is able is allowed to connect to uh, SecureSync. Uh, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a very practical use case around this, which I think drove this for us uh, quite a bit. Um, we have we have a lot of customers that are really concerned, right, about uh, somebody going home, installing SecureSync on a personal laptop, and uh, kind of siphoning data there. Um, and so, uh, quite frankly, there weren't 
many controls in place, uh, except to recently added device alerts to, to, to let the admin know that somebody's doing that, right? And so what's in place right now is ability to, to prevent it. So what you could do is you could say, hey, look, for this account, uh, you can have, well, each user can have a maximum one desktop and one mobile device. Uh, and so when you roll out the service for the, for the customer, uh, that license, that device license gets taken up by the corporate, um, corporate PC or corporate, um, or the primary mobile device, right? And so any subsequent attempt to log in from a secondary device, if you, if you have a limit of one, would, uh, would be blocked. And, uh, you know, the user would hear, you exceeded your device limit, contact your admin. At the same time, the administrator would get an email saying, hey, look, we've got an authorized, uh, well, maybe that's a strong word. We've got a, uh, a user attempting to log in and they've exceeded their, you know, the device limit. And then you can, you know, in most cases, um, you, you might say, okay, well, we'll prevent that. We don't want them doing anything from their personal device. Or you might recognize that it's a device upgrade, right? Somebody is no longer using their original PC but they want to they want to start using the new one and you can um you can use the device management page actually to remove their old device to allow the new device uh to to work with uh with SecureSync. And so we we feel when this is launched and again it it's it's basically a week and change out uh we'll have a really really comprehensive device management story. Uh, for those of you that haven't ventured there um uh, a lot like we 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 have a device management menu that Basically outlines every single device connected to SecureSync with all kinds of details. Device name, uh, version of the app, right? Last activity date, um, if they're, um, if you're running backup, uh, for example, if you're backing up, uh, those additional folders that we support for SecureSync will tell you if the end user is compliant with the policy. Uh, and, and more importantly, we'll let you remotely wipe uh, a device, uh, you know, in, in case it gets lost. So w w with this in place, we, we feel like we've really rounded it out and have a great story that you'll see, you'll see when we start talking about the competitive landscape, it really puts us in a, in a unique position. Uh, and most importantly, from, from our standpoint, gives you more value to, to, to sell, um, and, and more, more sort of security capabilities to have in your toolkit to, to ensure that bad stuff doesn't happen, uh, to, to end customers. Uh, so this is again right around the corner. We have another related one. Um, it's about the web app. So the previous one imposed controls on uh, desktop and mobile apps, right, or devices. Uh, but then there's always a question around web app. Well, web app is kind of universally available. Uh, we have some customers that uh, simply want to prevent remote um, web app access or, or only to facilitate it over VPN. This may not be every customer. Right, the device manager may be good enough for for most most customers, but some regulated industries, there's a concern um, that the web app is accessible from anywhere. So what this would allow um, an admin to do is basically configure uh, one or more subnets, so only corporate networks. When you go home, can't access it, right? Um, and the theory there is that yeah, you can still access it over your mobile phone, but mobile app gives you a, a, a lot more capability. You can download more files you can do more uh sinister stuff if you will that we're preventing you from doing and um and so anyway so we're working on this and we're hoping to launch it by by the end of the year uh which will be i think one of the key uh key pillars in our in our security story great so so those are the the things that we've either launched this year or, or are about to launch um and i just wanted to kind of step back and talk through uh, the controls that really kind of stand behind the product. Um, you know, we named it a certain way. <laughs> we named it SecureSync uh, for a reason because that, that was clearly a focus for us, right? Uh, but we just want to make sure that everybody understands what's really there and that uh, you're collectively aware of that value and that you're, you're also selling that value, right? Because that that's important downstream to the end customer that these are included basically with every subscription. Uh, so I kind of broke it down into a couple of categories, um, each important in their own right. So uh, data security and privacy, uh, I think everybody's aware, but we uniquely do account level encryption keys. So there's obviously all kinds of name, namespace isolation on a on a multi-tenant platform, uh, but we specifically assign every customer their own unique encryption key, uh, preventing any type of um, you know uh, crossover security issues between customers and uh, putting a platform at risk should should a 
uh, customer get get hacked in some way or have uh, a virus or some some sort of a cyber attack. So we always want to make sure that customers' data is totally isolated and um, and we do that uniquely. I think some some of the some of the alternatives uh, will have a single encryption key for for every customer out there. Um, Bitdefender, super awesome story, unique. I, I encourage again everybody to to use it and to to message it with our product because it's a unique differentiator. Instant ransomware remediation. I think um, you know over over time some of the alternative platforms have have built some tools. Um, we haven't seen anybody that does a rollback, right, and that keeps customers' data for forever. Like we have specific data retention controls that you can manage and then have this sort of powerful rollback capability that just sort of instantly remediates problems related to ransomware and other issues. And that's still equivalent to some hours or days, right, that you're not spending uh, manually tinkering with those kinds of issues. Uh, and then it's a set of controls. Um, if you haven't recently been in the control panel, I, I would do an audit, right, of, of your customer accounts. Make sure that you've configured their external sharing appropriately, that you've got the right web, web link security controls. We have some, some really nifty things there where that basically can say, look, you're allowed to share, uh, web links, but they all have to be, uh, password protected or they all expire within three months. So there are things you can do for every single one of your customers to uh, to make sure their data is uh, is protected, or at least that we've done you know all all, all that we can to to protect it. Um, data protection. So this is the other thing that we really do uniquely, right? Is beyond being just a file sharing product, we allow you to uh, use us or use SecureSync or ShareSync as a endpoint backup product uh, that captures all these other folders off of the desktop backs it up in real time and allows you to recover from uh basically any um any data loss scenario. Uh AD and Azure AD integrations, 2FA, probably most are familiar with that. Um visibility, very important for if, if you're if you're pitching to regulated industries or, or actually I would say just about anybody now, we're finding that if you go even a little bit up market, um uh, medium-sized SMBs, they're much more security aware. They're going to want to have um, full audit trail of all, you know, all activity, all device visibility. And then for most of our partners, this, this feature called admin file management has been instrumental. It's, it's the one that allows you to kind of remotely manage end user file spaces. Um, and that still remains unique. Um, um, well, not, not all of the alternative products have this capability, and it sort of is essential, right, for for anybody that's managing a file sharing environment. Uh, we talked about device controls, and then and then lastly, uh, data retention. We have ways basically of preventing an end user from ever causing a, a data loss incident. They simply cannot delete something. They cannot empty their recycle bin. They can they can do the first level deletion, but they can never. Uh, empty their recycle bin, assuming that setting is still set the way we kind of default to it. That just gives you always a way to recover from data loss and look like, uh, I think a hero <laughs> to, uh, to the end customer. So, you know, all of these again included in all versions of the products. Um, you'll see 2020 roadmap. We plan on kind of expanding that, but we feel like that's a pretty good story, uh, that, that you're able to tell. Um, and that's not something that and customer will find right in all of the alternative solutions. So um, switching gears from from security to something else that we're particularly excited about, and I hope all of you are as well. Uh, so we've been sort of in the lab for the last little bit, uh, looking for ways of modernizing our product. And you know, we said beyond these security investments, uh, there are really two ways. One is um, build a streaming app uh, so that you know we can. We can facilitate access to larger file sets without um, without having to sync all that down to a device and or having to deal with uh, selective sync. So we've been uh, working on this for a while. We're in a partner beta. You'll, we've likely invited you to it if you have an NFR account. So um, for those of you, I, I think everybody knows what it is, but just in ten words or less, right? It, it's basically a secure sync desktop app that acts as a map drive or kind of a combo between a map drive and a sync app. Uh, it doesn't require the local space, right, for users to see all of their files. And then 
only when they click on a file does it download locally. Uh, and we have some, um, I'll actually, I'll quickly, quickly show it to you. Uh, I've been running it for, for a while and we're hoping, you know, to, to launch it this year. So it kind of looks and feels like secure sync or, or, or share sync, except you'll see we have these, uh, cloud icons that imply that this file isn't actually local. Actually, most of my files aren't local. They're all in the cloud, but I see them all here and, um, I'm, I'm able to pull them down when I need to. So here's an example, you know, SecureSync 2020 roadmap. When I click on the file, it's going to stream down. And of course, it's going to open on my other monitor and you'll see it here. And then I can make a change and, uh, and push it back up. So almost everything else works the same, including the backup features. They're still, they're still there. Um, uh, and again, that, that'll be really unique, right? We'll still be the only vendor that does still keeps ability to issue admin backup policies, but we'll stream the MySecureSync folder. And um, and we also have ability to clear local cache. Right now it's a manual action, um, but likely will be that way through the beta, but shortly after the GA, we'll make this really smart where it'll, the local cache can be cleared um, on its own over time. So it'll continue to kind of free up the space that, that's taken up by users activity, right? Uh, so we're working on or, sorry, we're in a uh, beta for Windows, um, and uh, Mac is coming. It's around the corner. Uh, we think uh, Q1 uh, next year, maybe beginning of Q2. So we understand that that's a missing piece here. Uh, if you are not on NFR and you haven't received an invitation from us, please reach out to us. So I'll just leave this on for for a couple seconds here. Um, Actually, that is not the correct uh, email address. Uh, so we have a typo. Uh, it is secure, secure sync at intermedia.net. <laughs> or let me do this. Okay, let's let's go out into the local environment. Uh, I uh, here we go. So I'll just I just want to make sure everybody takes down the right address. So you can email us at secure sync at intermedia.net, or you can take down uh, this URL. Uh, that's the beta uh, landing page, if you will. Uh, we've invited partners that are on our not for resale program. The idea there was that they're using SecureSync in their own environment. It's going to be easier for them to kind of use it in a day to day basis and send us um, all that insightful feedback. If you are not on NFR for some reason, if you're not, you should get on it because it's free. Uh, and, uh, you just get to use it in your own business as a partner. Uh, but if you have a different way of doing it, if you just want to do it on a demo account, just email us. We'll, we'll set you up with all you need to, to try the streaming client and then give you an opportunity to, uh, um, uh, to let us know what you think, um, and influence our kind of definition of, uh, of when to launch and when we're ready. Uh, so again, hope, hoping to, to get that out, um, uh, this year and follow, um, Follow shortly. Um, follow up shortly with uh, with the Mac version of it um, next year. So early next year. Great. So really quickly, uh, just a quick um, view of next year's roadmap. So you'll you'll see um, continued investment in the data security and protection. Uh, we're working on some really good admin reporting that we'll make available to you. And uh, we have some partners that even use this to kind of showcase value uh, of the product. And I think if you're one of those, you, you, you'll love what we come up here. Some of them are good for just security and awareness. Uh, so those are, those are coming. Um, and then um, we've already got some good, um, good feedback around streaming. Like there's some partners that want to enforce streaming app. So users can't download and use the syncing app. So we'll think about a policy that does that. I think eventually, uh, eventually, right, when our streaming app um, is mature, you know, we'll, we'll kind of have to figure out uh, how we position the two apps. Uh, we believe that once we develop this feature down here, which, which says setting folders to sync in streaming apps, so basically you're in streaming mode, but a user can right-click on a folder and say, uh, you know, make available offline or sync now. Then you have a, this kind of nice mix of streaming and syncing that uh, gives you access to offline files, right? So those that you sync down, but then still doesn't take up all the space uh, on your on your PC or, or Mac to um, 
to download all that content right from uh, from the company's main shares. Um, lots of other good stuff happening here. I, I want to highlight two things. I'll show you a quick uh, teaser uh, around a brand new web experience we're working on. Uh, so this is in progress now. It's just going to take some time to deliver it. Uh, we, you know, we want to modernize the web experience a little bit, and um, and I think you know, hopefully you like what you see in the next slide. Um, I think just a few more things I want to raise. One is uh, we're going to have a much kind of richer integration with the Unite Desktop app. So for those that are also selling Unite, we want to establish Unite or Elevate. We want to establish a really um, uh, Kind of meaningful relationship there and make it make it easy to sell secure sync with our UCAS solution um, and um, and we'll continue working on our file server sync uh, scalability improvements great so let me let me show you the uh, the new web experience so unfortunately uh, these didn't render as well through the meeting experience um, Maybe I'll maybe I'll try to share the local version. So, so some some quality was lo lost uh, as I as I did that. So just bear with me. I think it'll be easier if I just show you um, show you what it looks like. Oop, where are we? I think this is it. Okay, so I can enlarge it here and just kind of give you a, a quick quick peek. So we're moving in a in a direction where um, we'll just make it look a little cleaner, right? And um, uh, we'll, we'll use the, the full kind of width of the page, uh, and most importantly, we'll, we'll kind of lead users down two paths. One is recents and favorites. So we just imagine that over over time, there's like a heat map, right, where users keep opening the same files or same folders, uh, and instead of sending them back to their entire folder tree, we'll just make it easier for them to get uh, what they're looking for through web. Um, uh, that's that's one change. The other change is we want to build this kind of right hand pane experience, uh, including comments, including all the actions that you can do to a file or a folder, you know, share, move, delete, um, all that fun stuff. So it'll be available through other menus, but we just want to also make it available on the right and make it more engaging, have avatars for users and um, uh, modernize it in that respect. So down here is another example of it, but with a different view. So we're moving from just a file centric view or, or sorry, a item centric view into a thumbnail view. So some of you have told us that your customers deal with a lot of images and it's just kind of difficult to see the difference between them before you download the full image. Well, we'll make that possible now, make it really simple. So again, we're, we're kind of moving down this path. It's a 20, early 2020 uh, deliverable. So look out for some probably beta invitations um, uh, early next year and then and then a launch shortly thereafter. Okay, so let me get back to our slide deck. Um, great, sorry about that. We, we expected the quality to be a little better. Uh, so I just wanna kind of take all of this information that I shared with you and, um, and talk about um, our positioning, which hasn't really changed, but we feel like it's been reinforced. Uh, and just wanted to make sure you're, you're sort of aware of that. So we've, as we look around um, some of the alternatives out there, right, um, we, we keep realizing that uh, what's really unique about us from a program perspective is that we're partner first file management. We're literally uh, out of the market leading product, the one product that's really designed with channel in mind first. Uh, this is our primary um, source of revenue. This is our primary kind of audience that we design the product for, uh, and that's reflected in you know the investments um, around the control panel and the branding, to uh, you know uh, the program pieces that allow you to own um, the customer relationship, uh, allow you to own the top line revenue, right? So instead of owning some some um, a referral fee, you, you actually own the customer and um, you own the full full top line revenue and you sort of partner with us in a meaningful way where we support you with pre-sales, we support you with um, actual selling effort, with onboarding after that and with that kind of unique 24-7 uh, award-winning support. 
these really kind of jump out at us as things that really add a ton of value in our program that sometimes kind of get overlooked. Um, and just wanted to kind of raise those again because we feel like they make the most difference at the end of the day when, when you have a, you know, 24 seven support, when you're doing a deployment in the evening, um, you're not waiting for, for somebody to come back on Monday morning. You've got somebody on the phone right then and there walking you through it. Right. Or you can defer a case to us instead of spending days trying to troubleshoot it on your own, uh, financially backed five nines guaranteed, same, same thing, right. Uh, certain sort of peace of mind and this partner first approach eliminates channel conflict in that we really downplay our, our direct business. We, it has to be there just to to have certain product awareness, but we all of our investments are on the partner side, uh, and um, we make sure that no channel conflict is is, is created. And if there is one, it's partner first. Um, and then this whole unique direction, I think, beyond file sharing, we go beyond file sharing. It's data protection, uh, and uh, it's it's this sort of category of, of security capabilities, anti-malware, ransomware remediation, and then controls, right? Uh, and so we we f- believe or hope to have a really good story there with both partners and end customers where you have really a ton of value to deliver downstream to the customer and we're delivering um, that value to you, uh, making us the more kind of attractive partner, uh, if that makes sense. So um, I'm not going to spend... a a ton of time here, we just kind of broke out some of these things and started to think about them in, in categories, you know, and uh, you'll you'll see at the very top here, these are mostly file sharing capabilities, right? Like all the market leading products, like very good at that. Excellent at file sharing and mobility, um, really uh, fantastic. But then if you think about other things that you really care about when it comes to data, namely data retention, uh, backup of other folders, right? So I don't have to deploy one of these other file sharing products plus a backup product. That that changes my margin story. Um, there isn't a whole lot there. And this is the incremental value that you want to sell with SecureSync. Uh, the file server sync continues to be kind of a unique story for us. And we're going to continue to invest there. If you have customers in a file server, this can either help migrate off of them or... Um, um, or, or enhance them, right? So they can keep the file server, but uh, make that data mobile and remote access enabled. Uh, and then if, if you just look at the, the kind of the category of, of security capabilities, some of them are available with some of these products, but if you look at the, you know, your acquisition price and the MSRP, uh, you know, we'll let you kind of deduce the value there, but there's lots of upside for you to include these this kind of package, right? And see that it's, it's selling for, you know, Twenty twenty five dollars um, uh, as a retail price, right? You don't have to go that far, obviously. And I think there are different strategies that you want to employ there. You can be a, a more cost uh, effective solution and still retain uh, a lot of margin there. So um, going down that same path, just kind of thinking through the pricing, we just want to give you some of the thoughts that that been shared with other partners with us and what's made them successful. Uh, so on the left, you have our, our our pricing, right, and packaging. You have ten gigs. Uh, partner price four bucks, ten gigs seven dollars, and unlimited for ten. These are all per user per month, right? And all the storage is pooled, so that you know the flexible packaging allows you to right size uh, uh, every deployment, right? So if you know if, if it's a big account with lots of users but not a lot of storage, maybe you, you can sell ten gigs, small account, lots of storage. Maybe you got to go to unlimited. Uh, so you can play with that to to come in at the right price point and deliver the right value to the customer. Uh, and you know your your default margin on these is between 20 to 33 percent. So if you just sell at MSRP, that's your kind of baseline move. Sell at MSRP, you're at market or below market here, uh, and, and you got a, a healthy margin. The alternatives have to bake in other backup products, right? So it's always their math is always going to look a little different. So I'll, let's put that aside for now. But you can sell securities in this way. Just sell it straight up. You know, take our MSRP and sell that way. Uh, I'd say that's one motion. Another motion is something that's employed by really sophisticated partner partners is what they'll do is they'll sell unlimited to the end customer. Okay, so they'll say, look, you've got unlimited secure sync storage and I'm going to charge you, you know, uh, 15 bucks uh, for it. But because you're only using seven 
uh, gigs per user now, or you're only using, I don't know, 50 gigs per user, I'm going to provision one of these smaller packages. You don't need to know what I've got provisioned. I've reserved unlimited pricing for you. So you can kind of play that game. And what we've learned is that it takes a long time uh, for somebody to migrate from kind of 10 to 100 and 100 to unlimited. And you've got months and months where you're earning a much higher margin. So something to kind of consider if, if you if you have those kinds of opportunities. Um, and then there's kind of a third approach. Uh, some of our partners will say, look, you've got backup and file sharing here. Um, it's minimum 20 bucks in the market out there. I'll, you know, provision unlimited sell it at $20. That's, you know, 100% margin. So, and, you can, and there are probably many variants in between, but given the flexibility, you can play with, uh, you know, customer needs, uh, pricing uh, and, and and margin and offer, um, and we can work with you on this. Obviously, to help you help you come up with the right strategy for each each specific customer. So, uh, really quick here, uh, just an example uh, as to how one can build 100k in annual revenue for Skiersing. Uh Because of this annual recurring model, um, it turns out that. All you have to do is you have to sell 50 unlimited SecureSync seats per month. So that assumes that, you know, you're charging $15 per user. Okay, so every month you have to get new 50 and retain the old ones. So you can't have any churn. Assuming you don't have any churn, by adding 50 users a month, you you end up with hundred and almost $10,000 business just after one year. You could probably do more than 50 users if you go aggressively against your base, but that's where the opportunity is, right? And and you get all that, you deliver all that value to the end customer. So I'll just uh, food for thought as as to how you can kind of think about building this business block by block. Uh, so, uh, Carlos, am I turning it over to you here? Yep. Thank you, Royan. Uh Great. So now it's time for uh, sharing our uh, great promotion. Um, for a limited time, we offer uh, Securising 10 gigs, Securising 100 gigs, and the unlimited plan for free, uh, free month. And that's for new accounts, meaning your uh, clients that they haven't paid for uh, Securising in the past, okay? Um, that This promotion is, is running through uh, the end of the year, so you have uh, October, November, and, and December to to apply. It's, it's a great opportunity, and if you have accounts that you think um, they qualify, you just need to contact your uh, account manager, and then he or she will, will help you, and you can get this uh, promotion. Also, uh, remember that we have the Not For Resale, uh, the NFR uh, program. Since many of you are active uh, resellers of Securising, I'm, I'm sure you, you're familiar with, with that, but it's basically you can use Securising uh, for free internally. And as you know, it's a great, it's a great way to use and, and learn as much as possible the product, and that will help you selling uh, security, security sync. So we have uh, new marketing uh, materials. Actually, some of you, I'm, I'm, I saw questions about if we have uh, videos, email templates, so the answer is uh, yes. Uh, we have a new uh, email template that you can use to notify your uh, customers about uh, Bitdefender deployment. You just you know download uh, this email template, which is available in the partner portal, and you just you know add the name of your uh, company. You can customize. It's very very easy to use. We have uh, videos from uh, Boyan explaining step by step how to deploy Bitdefender. Very useful. All of these is uh, actually you will get all of them uh, in the thank you email uh, probably uh, tomorrow you will get this uh, thank you for attending and you have not just uh, security sync uh, related uh, videos and, and assets but also about uh, other security 
products from from Intermedia, okay? And you have uh, also videos from uh, Ryan Barrett, he's our uh, VP of Security and, and Privacy, that he's, it's really a customized video for uh, you partners about all the solutions and all the services that we have to help you, you know, secure uh, your customers, secure your uh, customers' uh, files and documents. And I also saw questions about if you can customize uh, these assets. Yes, many of them uh, you can add your uh, branding, your name. So we, we make it, as you know, very easy for you to sell and, and close uh, business. I keep this uh, very short. We have uh, lots of uh, questions and also this uh, reminder. I don't know, Boyan, if you want to cover that or I'll, I'll do it quickly. Oh, I, I can I, I can just piggyback. So real quick, yeah. before we get into the Q&A, um, I think most or if not all are aware that uh, SecureSync is sort of an integral part of uh, our, our UCAS solution as well. Um, if you uh, haven't looked at that um, product line, you know we strongly encourage you to do the same. Uh, it is also partner first, and it's uh, built around a really good phone system, uh, and then uh, a set of unified communications capabilities on top of that, on top of that, including uh, uh, team chat, video conferencing, uh, call center bits, file collaboration is is a uh, is a part of that collaboration story, and it's it's integrated today, and we plan on taking that integration further and further to make it make it really make it really meaningful. Um, the market opportunity is tremendous, so we just wanted to kind of show you uh, where SecureSync is playing today. Uh, and we conservatively took like the file management um, uh, upside, right? Which is about 25 billion in North America. Uh, but then if you if you take that uh, broader and think about other ways of uh, managing end customers communication and collaboration that becomes nearly a hundred billion dollar opportunity that all partners are kind of buying for and um, if you haven't already we encourage you to reach out to your rep and um, learn more about uh, intermedia unite uh, slash elevate so with that said i think it's time to do a bit of q a um carlos do you want me to just start at the very top of the list Yes, please. Great. So, so as new questions are coming in, I'm hoping not to miss any, but I'll I'll start here. We have um, um, a question. Can you please match Dropbox usability for iOS? SharePoint isn't very well embedded into the sharing menu. Um, acknowledged, uh, and we're working on it. Uh, we need to be there, and we will be there. I I think. Hopefully this year, if not, then early next year. So it's 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 top of our list as far as uh, mobile improvements. Uh, it, it works quite well on Android, but iOS is changing things um, very frequently, and so this one this one caught us off guard. Um, question about our interoperability with QNAP, uh, probably similar NASs. Uh, this comes up quite a bit, to be honest. And we just we see a, a, a really really good use case with file servers, right? And that's why we've built that file server sync app, and we've developed a really kind of slick motion to move off of file servers. Uh, but we haven't just we haven't found the right business model for integrating with NAS devices beyond just selling cloud storage. And you know what? You can get better cloud storage from Amazon or somebody else, right? Like there's there are other just plain old cloud storage systems out there. Uh, we cannot see a way to add meaningful value on top of it, right? So if you if you have uh, some thoughts for us, let's connect offline. That same email address, securesingintermedia.net, is a good way to reach out, and we can have a, a good conversation. See if uh, if there's an opportunity we've overlooked. Um, question about how we prove to a customer that we're HIPAA compliant. So simple. We'll sign a BA agreement, uh, and that's actually the case, I think, across all of our services, SecureSync, Unite, email. So all you have to do is reach out to your rep. They they can start to 
facilitation process, right, where where that goes uh, to a legal team and um, we sign the BAA. Um, great question. So we didn't cover it here because it's kind of an incremental update, but somebody just asked, you know, wh wh why why two brands, right? Why SecureSync and ShareSync? So uh, I'll, I'll give you the short version. Um, we have almost 7,000 partners uh, in our ecosystem. Many of them, the vast majority of them, prefer a private label model. So they prefer to own the customer relationship fully. They prefer to uh, not have the customer know that the service comes from Intermedia, um, which is kind of, you know, what you're at risk with whenever you deploy a product that's that's branded. Next contract renewal, customer just signs up with the vendor directly. This has happened. Um, so to protect their ownership of the customer, they, they want to be private labeled. We don't white label uh, the product for each partner. We don't have, like our partners do, pretty decent volume, but to do that kind of white labeling would need enormous volume. So we don't, we don't, you know, you don't have a, a custom name for every partner, but we have a gray label name, which is ShareSync. It's basically a brand that's designed for a channel that does not link back to Intermedia in any way and basically eliminates that channel conflict. Uh, we do have a direct business, which, um, which we're not sort of aggressively pursuing with SecureSync, uh, but SecureSync is there in our lineup. Uh, and so, uh, so, so the reason for two brands is that we have to facilitate uh, our direct business and our advisor business, and then most importantly, we need to facilitate our, our private label business. And uh, uh, most of our sales are actually on the ShareSync product. Now, having said all this, there is a third model that we recently launched, which is co-branded. So if you're one of those partners that says, hey, look, I I don't care. I, I want to sell SecureSync, right? I I, I want to tell my customers that Intermedia is behind this. There's a co-branded model. Uh, and this is, these are all choices you can make as a partner as to how you want to sell it. And it's got some implication on who supports the customer and, uh, and the branding and so forth. So if you, if you, you know, need more details, I encourage you to, to call your rep. Uh, they'll, they'll show you, you know, where you can make this decision and, uh, what the implications are. Hope that answers it. Um, so I think I got some of these while we were in the um, in the presentation. Um, uh, great question. So how can ShareSync and OneDrive be positioned to work together since we sell both? Um, so this is a this is a tricky tricky area, right? Um, from my perspective, uh, it's kind of a binary decision. It's a binary decision between OneDrive and SecureSync and also OneDrive and like Dropbox for Business or um, uh, nam namely because users need to be kind of driven to a single place to, to fetch their files. Um, if uh, OneDrive is kind of an integral part of your pitch, um, and you know that that's the part of the value that you really kind of deliver to customers. We, you, you probably can't put secure thing there. Um, alternatively, right, our our continuous pitch kind of versus OneDrive is that um, you can't really charge for it, so it's really hard to make money. Um, it's considered to be free. So you kind of take on the support burden. I mean, maybe you charge for it, and that's great. If you charge for support, then that's that's fair game, and I think that's a that's a reasonable approach. Um, um, OneDrive for business does not have these backup capabilities and does not have the security controls that we just talked about. So most partners make that decision: sell OneDrive or SecureSync. And if I'm selling SecureSync over OneDrive, I'm I'm selling it because it allows me to make money while delivering value that I cannot deliver with OneDrive. And we've got a pretty good integration story with uh, with Microsoft, right? With uh, Outlook and Office and Open and Save As menus. And we're, we're kind of pretty well built in, uh, even with Office off Online. Uh, so historically, we've sort of served as a pretty good replacement for OneDrive in those environments. But you know, you'll have to kind of base that upon customer requirements and your, your sort of business model and, and expectations. Um, 
in terms of margin and, and revenue upside. Um, uh, Boyan, uh, I see a couple of uh, questions about the, the competitive uh, the slide that you are uh, showing. We have something similar to this in the partner uh, portal, but we are going to update and we will notify you when we have like the, the latest and greatest, okay? But definitely, yeah, we, we see that, that you really love the competitive uh, charts. I think we, we got probably five, six questions about that. So the, the answer is yes, it's available. Probably just wait a, a little bit and we will update and then you, you get the latest. Hey, so thank you, Carlos. I think, in the interest of time, um, we probably probably uh, uh, take some of these other questions offline. There's a few we yeah. haven't yeah. Uh, been able to answer, but we will be doing follow-ups uh, after the webinar, so we'll make sure to get to you and uh, and talk through the question that you that you have. Uh, I'll just close it with just one. There's a question: you know, How do I learn more and get trained on the product? And that's sort of our favorite question of the day. Um, uh, many ways of doing that. Um, we have uh, a team that specifically uh, is here to, to help people learn more about the product and train them on how to sell, how to support, et cetera, and um, they're accessible through your account manager. But we'll we'll follow up with you directly uh, on that. And whoever else is interested, you can if you want to sort of uh, expedite that process, just reach out to your account manager. They'll they'll make. Uh, actual human resources available to you. There's also a partner university if you want to do kind of self-based uh, stuff, but there, there are multiple approaches. And, and while you're learning, we'll do kind of sell with calls with you. You know, we'll, we'll get on calls with customers, um, pretend to be one of your employees and do, do all the good work of selling. So um, in the meantime, um, uh, thank you so much for the time. Hope this was useful. Um, we'll, we'll communicate offline regarding outstanding questions and uh, uh, hope all of you decide to join our, our streaming app beta. And, and if you do, we're excited to have you and you know you can help us uh, get the product ready for GA. Thank you again. Carlos, if you want to say some, some closing remarks, yeah. all yours. Thank you so much uh, for the time. We really appreciate the questions, the the um and all the all the positive uh, feedback have a very nice day thank you thanks everyone talk right. to you